Hello everyone. The reason I'm putting up this video is because when I was doing my master's in food science, I found you know applying statistics to a food science or product development context was something that I could not find nearly enough resources for online. And now that I'm a qualified food scientist, I thought it would be really helpful if I just covered briefly the kind of tests that you might need and how you should apply them um, in this field. Right. So to get started, just to introduce what I'm going to cover today, I will be covering the background and a few examples of the kind of scenarios you might encounter for which you would need statistical analysis. Uh, this video would mostly cover those related to analytical tests, not so much sensory evaluation. I'll also cover a few basic statistical tests that you might need and how you enter your data into SPSS. What I won't be covering is how to actually run these tests and how to interpret the results. And that is because I highly recommend that you invest in a lead statistics subscription. This was recommended to me by my professor and I found it immensely helpful. So no, this is not a paid promotion. I genuinely benefited from this. So they cover detailed explanations for how you should run these tests, how you should interpret results, how you should go about ensuring that the test you've chosen and the data you have meet certain assumptions. And these are not even a fraction of the guides that you'll find on their website. And if you ever land in trouble, there's a support email ID where you actually get personal responses to each and every problem that you have. So I highly, highly recommend this. Uh, even if you take a one month subscription, it's totally worth it. So just to cover the context of you know, this video, I'm going to be talking about burgers because this is what I looked at for my dissertation. I was essentially trying to measure, trying to develop three formulations of burgers, one which was 100% beef, one which had 20% of the beef swapped out for kidney beans, and one which had 40% of the beef swapped out for kidney beans. So after developing these formulations, I then measured certain physical characteristics, chemical, I did basic plate counts, as well as sensory evaluation to find out if people could actually tell the difference between these two and whether they liked which one they liked more than the other. So this is the context in which all examples that I will be covering, um, this is the context of the examples that I will be covering. And so let's say you want to measure fat before and after cooking, or you want to measure fat content between the raw and the cooked control, or you want to measure protein content between a control and a 20%. Okay, you might need what's called a, a t-test, right? And if you want to measure differences in yield or differences even in protein between all three groups, so my control, my 20% and 40%, because there are three groups, you might need what's called a one-way ANOVA. You might also take one sample, let's say the control, and you might want to measure bacterial growth on day zero, day three, and day five. Because you're measuring the same sample, but at three different points in time, you might need what's called a one-way repeated measures ANOVA, right? So moving on to the next one, so these are my three burgers. I've got the control, the 20% kidney bean, and the 40% kidney bean. So the other important thing you need to know before you start your test is what type of study do you have and what are the kinds of variables that you'd encounter? So in most of the examples that I've covered, you're looking at differences between groups and between subjects. So you have three distinct groups and you're trying to find out whether there's a difference between group one and group two or group two and group three or between all three groups. Okay, you also have different kinds of variables. So you might have independent variables. These are also sometimes called factors. And these are variables that are not really in your control, right? So in this case, my level of replacement, which is 0, 20, and 40, this is not in my control, technically speaking, for, for the purpose of statistical analysis, because this, it's something that's fixed. And my dependent variables would be things like my protein content, fat content, yield, because these are all things that depend on the level of replacement. So fairly straightforward. The other kinds of variables you might encounter are nominal variables. So think of when you think of nominal, think of name. Here in this case, you're just naming certain variables, but those values that you attribute to these variables have no real uh, meaning as such. This will become clearer once you know I, I actually show you a few examples. You might also have ordinal variables. Uh, so think of ordinal variables as those which have an order to them. So for example, if you have a, a hedonic liking scale from one to nine, where one is dislike and nine is like, there is certain order to it, but you can't say that someone who's ranked 
you can't say that number you know a score of 2 is, is the difference between the score of 2 and 1 is the same as the difference between 9 and 8 that's something you can't do but you can say that there is a certain order to it you might also have continuous variables so the easiest way to think of continuous variables is if you say 0 if that variable's value is 0 it means there's none of it so if i say 0% fat it means there's no fat same with protein 0% protein means there's no protein so these are con these are what's called these are what are called continuous variables in spss you might need these might be denoted by the word scale okay covariates are something that i didn't need to use but you might need to so these are essentially factors for which you want to control so for example if i'm looking at fat content but i want to control for moisture then moisture becomes my covariate so I hope it's clear up to this point. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. So moving on to the first scenario. So let's say I want to measure protein content between the control and the 20% burger. So as you can see, I have one independent variable, which is my level of replacement. So my control and the 20%. And I have two groups in among my independent variables because it's this and this. Right, and then I also have one dependent variable, which is my protein content. So this is one situation in which you might need to use a t-test. You might also want to measure fat content of the control before and after cooking. Right, so you, again, you have one independent variable, which is your stage or the time, which is before and after. Again, two groups, and you might have one, and you have one dependent variable, which is fat content, which is a continuous variable. Now, these two examples are slightly different because in this case, you're measuring two independent groups, right? So then in this, you would use what's called an independent sample t-test. Whereas here, because you have the same group, which is a control, which you're measuring at two different points in time, you'd use what's called a paired sample t-test. Okay, so this is your, this is some scenarios in which you might use a t-test. So basically, the main characteristics are you'll have Two groups and you'll have an independent and dependent variable okay one way ANOVA is generally used when you've got three groups okay so it's basically think of it as a t-test but instead of running it on two groups you're doing it on three okay and so in my case let's say I, I needed to measure protein content among the three groups for each kind of burger so I have my level of replacement which is 0 20 40 and I have three groups Right? And my dependent variable would be protein content. You might also want to measure yield. So again, you have level of replacement as your independent variable, which is three groups, and then you've got a dependent, which is yield, which is a continuous variable. Okay, now let's say I, I have this control and I wanted to see whether kidney bean has any antimicrobial properties. It doesn't, but let's just say I wanted I wanted to check this out. So in that case, I might take the control on day zero and I might do a basic plate count. Then I might, the same control, I might incubate it further, take it on day three and then day five. Okay, so my independent variable would be days and I've got three groups, so day zero, day three and day five. And my dependent variable would be my plate count or total viable count. So because you're measuring the same sample on three different days, you'll use what's called a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. Okay, so Laird Statistics has this has what's called a statistical test selector. So if you know the kinds of variables you have, how many groups, it'll also you input all this data. It's like a, you know, kind of like a survey, and then they'll compute which is the most appropriate test for you to use, and then they'll teach you how to do it as well. Moving on to setting up your data in SPSS. Okay, so this is this is you'll first go to what's called a variable view and here you'll have to set your data up depending on all the things you measured so in column one this is what's called a name it's just a very short description we have certain rules like you can't put spaces capitals are not allowed only underscores so these are some basic rules you'll have to follow but it's just a basic description the type of data you the options you have are numeric alphanumeric um, most of my data was numeric, so that's why they're all over here. Width is a width of the column, not really super important. And decimals refers to the number of decimal places. Label is a detailed description. So if you can see here in row one, 
my short description is type of patty but my detailed description was level of replacement okay and then over here this is the only variable which was nominal so coming to act what actually is a nominal variable if you go to let's click on you know you click on that that um, space you will get a pop up box like this and essentially what this does is you're trying to code you're giving each of these control my kidney bean 20 kidney bean 40 you're giving them a code number so that it's easier when you actually move on to putting in your data and the data view it becomes easier rather than typing control kidney bean 20 each and every time you can just hit one and it'll mean control you can hit two it'll mean kidney bean 40 and so on okay so you can't say that two is greater than one or three is greater than two in this case and that's what you mean when you say nominal they're just names they have no meaning no value okay the meaning is what you give it so in my case i've used the value one to mean control i've used the value two to mean kidney bean 20 and the value three to mean kidney bean 40 not to say one's higher or lower than the other okay so once you've done all that scale refers to a continuous variable most of my analytical data was scale data role you can just leave it as none that's fine so once you've actually set up this master sheet on how you're going to input your data you move on to the data view this is your data view so as you can see type of fatty this is the symbol for nominal okay these are the symbols for scale or continuous data these are all the short names that i've given it so every time you put one 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 it means these three are controls so because i conducted my experiments in triplicate there are three ones three twos and three threes okay so then you correspondingly input all your data for the first replicates the second replicates and third replicates same way for kidney bean 20 and kidney bean 40 okay and that is pretty much it this is your master sheet from which you use your you know your statistical guides to pull up whatever data you need and whatever analysis you need to run okay but this is all it is from this you decide what kind of test you need to run and how you're going to run it and it'll just keep pulling up from this master setup in my case some of the uh, attributes i was measuring weren't in triplicate but i actually measured them in five replicates because this got a little bit messy on the sheet where i where you know some some areas would have been blank and i'd have to exclude cases list wise or case wise as the case may be i decided that all the attributes for which i was measuring five replicates i would just use put them in a separate sheet because it's cleaner that way okay so this is the same thing it's just one on one two 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 three 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 and then you put all your corresponding replicate data so finally after you do all this you know you use your guide it'll tell you how to satisfy the assumptions of each test how to run these tests uh, what are the pre and post treatments you can give these tests and finally what you might end up with is something that looks like this okay so you've got your data which you've presented as mean with standard deviation um, for three replicates and then you might say because i was measuring three groups i said a one-way anova revealed that there was a statistically significant difference in mean protein contents as to what this means and what an f statistic is or what your partial eta squared is these are all things that the lead statistics guide will explain so i'm not going to get into these in too much detail but this is typically how you would present your results so as you can see with your significance value less than 0 0.05 there is a significant difference in protein content between the three groups and that protein content kept de decreasing as the level of replacement increased okay if i've not said this i think i've said this enough but please do invest in this it is super helpful you'll actually come up with a report that you can be proud of so highly highly recommend i hope this video was helpful and if you did find it helpful um, you know please drop um, a comment below or share it with other food science students in your batch and if you have any questions i'll do my best to answer them if you just pop them in the comments below the video on sensory evaluation and how to input your data for that is slightly different so i'll be uploading another video for that uh, shortly so keep a lookout for that too cheers bye